And good morning, everybody. Welcome in. This is WBRT Radio and BRTV, Bar Sound Cable Channel 19. And now it's time to turn the microphone over <laughs> to, to Allison Claywell Roby. And Allison, good morning and uh, welcome in today. Good morning. And we are going to be talking about children who have sometimes, some have gone back to school and some are still at home or getting for preschool now that we have those preschools mm -hmm. that start at what, two, three years of age, I think? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's uh, sleep is an important thing. You've talked about it from the adult standpoint on, on more than one occasion, I think, here on this show on For Your Health. Uh, sleep is also important for children. Sleep is actually more important for children. And it, it's a misnomer because, you know, children, you know, you get them a little bit overactive and they, they are wild and hyper and, and they can go all day if you let them um, until they, you know, crash. And I've actually had people say, oh, they they don't need to go to bed. They, they don't need as much sleep as we do. And that's actually the worst thing you can ever assume about a child. Children need more sleep than adults do. And it's very, very important that we make sure they're getting the sleep they need. Well, other than... Uh, you know, baiting them or not. <laughs> How do we get our children to, to sleep? I mean, there are some, you know, our metabolisms are different in, in human beings and that doesn't, that starts at childhood or birth. Uh, so what are some of the things that we can do? And then I'll let you talk more about the importance of sleep. Absolutely. Um, you know, basically with children, um, when you see that child that all of a sudden is wild, they should have gone to bed a long time ago. Um, and so the biggest thing is you've got to have them on a schedule. And, I mean, even, I mean, people don't think about it, but even a 15 to 20-minute swing in a sleep schedule can completely disrupt a, a sleep pattern. And so it's extremely important to pick a bedtime, and that is bedtime. And, you know, it's funny. I was uh, sitting at the doctor's office for a, a checkup not too long ago, and I had my soon-to-be 8-year-old with me. And, you know, in the summer, I let him, I'm the mean mom, right? He goes to bed at 9 in the summer. I figure that's late enough. And so I, this is about three weeks before school. And I said, well, remember, this weekend, bedtime moves up to 8.30. And then the week after, which was about six days before school starts, you're back to 8 o'clock. Now, you know, until sec, for, middle of first grade, it was a 7.30 at night bedtime, which everybody gives me a hard time, calls me the sleep Nazi, that that's too early. And there was a lady in there that says, oh, the negotiations begin. And I just looked at her and I went, oh, no, no, this is not a negotiation. <laughs> this is the rules. This is, you know, and that's sadly, I think, how some parents look at it. Well, let's yeah. negotiate a bedtime. And no, you ha this is where you really have to be a parent. Um, and it, what's interesting is that before the invention of the light bulb, we got li way more sleep than we get now. And so now that we have lights and TVs and late night TVs and, well, 24-hour TV, we get a lot less sleep. And what's sad about it is that sleep problems in this country cost about $100 billion a year in lost work productivity, medical expenses, sick leave, and then damages, believe it or not, damages to your property. Because when you're sleep deprived, you do weird things like sleepwalk. And people have been known to sleepwalk and turn their stove on and catch their house on fire. So this same thing happens to children, right? So 2 million children suffer from sleep disorders. That's, that's kind of a lot. About 40% of children in this country do not get enough sleep. So you're looking at, you know, close to 50% of kids need more sleep. So, you know, how much sleep do they need? Children from ages 5 to 10 need approximately 11 hours of sleep. And so you got to think about it. If you're getting your kid up at 630 to go to school, what's 11 hours prior to that? And they need to be in the bed with their lights off. You know, 11 hours. 11 I mean, hours. We talk about 8 hours being the magic I guess call it magic number for adults. Children need more. Need why? 11. Why? Their brains are still developing is the biggest thing. Okay. Is your brain repairs and resets and grows while you sleep. Um, and all the stresses that you undergo through the day, they go away when you sleep. And people say, well, children don't have stress. Yes, they do. I mean, there are children out there that, you know, we have a lot of poverty in this country, and that is one of the most stressful things for children is you think they don't know, but they know. They know that they are in a poverty situation. They know that, you know, maybe there's not a whole lot of food on the table at night. They see mom and dad killing themselves trying to pay the bills. That is very stressful yeah. to a young child. And it's studies show time and time again that children in a poverty situation sleep worse than children who are not in that same situation. So big, big problem. So not only do we have 40% that don't get enough sleep, 69% um, of children actually have some kind of sleep disturbances at least a few nights a week. So that can be anything from having trouble falling asleep to waking up at night to bedwetting to grinding their teeth. So there's lots of little little things there. So, you know, and you'd ask me what can you do, and, you know, the big thing was the schedule. And I was going to save this till the end, but I'll maybe I'll mention it twice. My favorite gift to give 
parents um, of new babies who've never had children before, and even some that maybe it's their second child and they've never been introduced to it. There's two books, and my favorite book is Dr. Mark Weisbluth. It's called um, Healthy Sleep Habits, Happy Child. And then there's another one by uh, Gary Ezo and Robert Buckman. I couldn't remember the other guy's name, called On Becoming Baby Wise. Now, I've not read the Baby Wise book, but I lived by the Healthy Sleep Habits, Happy Child book. And, you know, I've like to brag that I have no problem putting my child to sleep you know it's whether it's 7 30 or 8 whatever time I pick he's in bed he falls asleep he sleeps all night and he wakes up he is in a good mood I can always tell if he didn't get a good night's sleep because they're cranky you know do you have a child that's cranky and irritable they're probably tired and so they need to go to sleep kind of like adults exactly I mean yeah exactly adults are the same way I mean we you don't handle stresses as well when you're sleep deprived and so Adults tend to be a little moodier, have more trouble with depression, don't handle stress as well when we don't sleep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's when, when you don't sleep, I tell people it's like running away from a bear all the time. You're chronically under stress. And we've talked about stress on pretty much every radio show, and I think. sometimes the bear will catch you. Yes. And that's when yes. things really get bad. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, the thing about children is that when they don't get enough sleep at night, it's kind of that chronic sleep deprivation. So it starts to affect their daytime performance. So they're more daytime fatigued. And so those little 15 to 20 minute swings over time, you may not notice it the first day, it may be a week later and you can't figure out why your child is moody. Why did they wake up? Why can't they go to sleep? But it really was something that happened a week ago that started that cycle of, well, we went to bed, you know, too late on Saturday night. And so on Wednesday, all of a sudden we can't get out of bed. We got in trouble at school, you know, whatever it may be. And the problem with children is that, it, it, you know, we've all as adults experienced this. When you get tired, really tired, then all of a sudden you're slap happy and you're just, you know, wired. Right? That happens more pronounced in children. So you got that child that it's at 9 o'clock at night and they are wound tighter than a screw. And you think, well, obviously they're not tired. No, they're more tired than they need to be. Okay. And so and my rule, my always advice to people with young children is if your child, especially newborns, like you got a 7 or 8 or 9 month old and you go to put them down and they fight you and they cry and they're irritable, you should have put them to bed probably 30 minutes sooner. So the minute you see that kid rub their eyes, yawn, they're tired, you know, and, and, and you gotta, got to get them into bed. We've noticed that in, in a grandchild. We've had her, Cicely, in for a little bit, and, uh, and yeah, she rubs those eyes. It's, you know, okay, she's giving us the signal. You know, we sometimes as grandparents, you want to get some, a little, steal a little bit more time with them. Well, that's not good. It's right. And well, and it's tough. You have a lot of parents that work long hours. I mean, right. and, and I think I have great hours. And there are still nights that I don't get home until 6.30. So when my child was going to bed at 7.30, I mean, that's an hour. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's eat dinner, take a shower, take a bath, whatever, and get in bed. You know, read that one book and get in bed. And it, it all happens very quickly. Now, I will say I got a lot of stuff done. Once, you know, if the child goes to bed at 7.30 and I don't go to bed till 10, well, goodness gracious, I got time to do the laundry and clean the house yeah. and relax. Yeah. So there's a huge benefit to getting your kid to bed early because then you actually are going to get more sleep too okay so and that's a big key so a couple things to keep in mind children who get really good quality of sleep they do not get sick as much they're much less aggressive they don't get as much um, diagnosed with depression anxiety and ADD and they perform better in school children who do lack good sleep have trouble concentrating so they don't perform as well on tests that are complex they're more likely to be depressed sick and overweight Sleep is the most important thing for brain development and emotional regulation in a child. So we've got to put that, you know, and that study's out there, and if you read it, it'll say good sleep in a child is just as important as good nutrition and taking care of their health because it's the one of the biggest keys. So a couple of things to keep in mind. They're not going to outgrow their sleep problems. You've got to fix them. Children who sleep longer during the day have longer attention spans, and this is as a baby when we're still napping. Babies who sleep less in the daytime are more fitful and socially demanding, and they are less likely to be able to entertain themselves or soothe themselves when they get upset. Toddlers who sleep more are more fun to be around. And we all like fun toddlers, right? Nobody likes the screaming toddler. Even when they're your own, they're still not that much fun. (laughs) But children who sleep less tend to become hyperactive, and this is where the ADD and the ADHD um, issues really um, start to come in. Small deficits in sleep, so that 15 to 20 minute swing here and there, can have long-term effects on children's brain function. Children have higher IQs, the smarter kids sleep longer than the the kids that with the less um, high IQs. And for children that do have ADD and ADHD, when they 
can correct that underlying sleep issue, they can see dramatic improvements in their symptoms. So that's something important. And, and unfortunately, a lot of the ADD medicines really negatively impact the sleep because they're all stimulants. And even though they're given in the morning, and some kids do take them in the afternoon, they stay in that child's system and they keep them from getting that good night's sleep. So you're in a little bit of a vicious cycle. So if you have a kid that's borderline ADD and it's not on medication yet, it's so important to focus on the sleep habit first to get that under control. Um, but anyway, so many learning and, and behavior problems can be corrected by just a good night's sleep. It's amazing when, I mean, again, I, I keep going back to the fact that 11 hours after, mm -hmm. you know, we keep talking the eight hours. Right. Is, is that it's that many hours. And sometimes when, again, I'll say when we have the grandkids and, and what they sleep that long, we think, are, are they okay or whatever? Well, actually, that's good for them. It is, it is good. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, everybody knows the saying, don't wake, don't wake up a sleeping baby. Yeah. And that's true. And the eight hour of sleep for adults, actually, it begins at eight hours. It doesn't end. And before the light bulbs and the TVs, um, adults averaged 10 hours of sleep. Now we average 6.9. And so I'm saying, you know, if you go to bed and you wake up exactly eight hours later, that may not be enough sleep for you. So there's not any health detriments from sleeping longer, but there are definitely um some really problems with health if you don't sleep enough so yeah if you want to sleep 11 hours go for it you'll be healthier if you're going to sleep six hours you're going to have a lot more problems with your health and your child for sure so we talked about the routine setting that bedtime stick into it find something especially with and start this as those newborn babies is always have that kind of same routine so what is it a bath is it we're going to sit and rock and read a book you know what is it find some kind of routine that helps to relax you to your child because if you're stressed you're going to stress your child so find something that relaxes both of you um you want to limit food and drinks that are caffeine rich so chocolate obviously has caffeine in it even caffeine free drink, caffeine free drinks have caffeine in them so, you know, we typically say if you're having sleep issues, you should never, ever, ever have anything that has any kind of caffeine in it after lunchtime, which for most people is noon to one, mm -hmm. especially women. Women are more sensitive to that than men. This is my favorite, and this is something that uh, my new husband and I, we, I can't say we argued because it was his argument and I always just flat said no way, is TVs in the bedroom. You should never have a TV in the bedroom, and so many people do. And one of the biggest disruptors of sleep is TVs in the bedroom, and especially for kids. Don't let them play video games late at night. It stimulates the brain and overworks their adrenal glands, and then they're more wide awake than, and not relaxed, so they don't sleep as well. So don't watch scary stuff that's going to make you nervous or anxious. More important for kids, but even for adults, if you, you know, you notice, you can tell your heart rate gets up and you, you know, some people get really anxious. That's a true stress response. It really does stress your body. As much as I love scary movies, it, it can interfere with your sleep if you watch them late at night. <laughs> See, that's the reason I don't watch scary movies. <laughs> it's not that I'm chicken. Yeah. It's that I don't want it to affect my sleep at night. That's right. Which, because I'm chicken, it would affect my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's dark when you go to sleep, so, yeah, you know, yeah. scary movies, dark rooms, noises. what's under the bed, something in the closet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't exercise before bed. I'm a huge promoter of exercise, but it's m better in the morning or early evening because if you do it late, you've stimulated your body and it's well, harder to that, sleep. That was going to be my question is when is the best time? To exercise, it, we know nighttime's not the best. Is morning the best or You know, or? they really say morning is, and everybody's different. Some people just are not motivated enough in the morning, so, mm -hmm. you know, right after work, they tend to do it. And I have people that are great in the morning, but right after work, they're a little bit tired. Well, that actually is a good time to exercise because it will boost your energy level to get you through dinner and family yeah. time, and then you should be able to sleep well. You just don't want to do it within a couple hours of sleep. Okay. So definitely kind of avoid that. And then... Um, your bed should be for sleeping. It should not be for playing video games. It shouldn't be for working on homework, um, anything like that. The bed is sleep time. So especially for children, they don't need to be playing games or doing anything like that in their bed. When they get into bed, it's to lay down and go to sleep. So definitely keep that in mind. So those are kind of some rituals that you can do. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you always appreciate when the child gets into, just like anything else, into that good routine of sleeping through the night and sleeping going to bed at a, at a good hour because again there's benefits when you're a parent or slash grandparent uh that they, they are doing that because uh, especially when you're a grandparent they're a little 
create a little fatigue for us too, a little stress for us. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the amount of, um, of, of stressed parents that come in the pharmacy that we see because their child doesn't sleep well or, um, you know, it, it definitely impacts you. And then it's just kind of that vicious cycle. The child doesn't sleep well, so you don't sleep well, so nobody sleeps well. Then everybody has, you know, an immune system that doesn't work right, you know, can't concentrate at work. So, you know, maybe they're, you become anxious and depressed, and that's very common with sleep problems. So. Uh, meal time. We've talked a little bit about exercise time. Meal, meals, three meals a day, important for anybody of any age, and, and maybe for children they should eat maybe a have a little snack every once in a while. You know, snacks. Yeah, snacks are fine. And basically, the rule is is you don't want to eat a big meal close to bedtime. Right. It is fine to have a light snack before you go to bed, um, but you know, too much is going to affect that sleep in a negative way, and it can cause digestive issues because you don't want to have a full belly and then lay down, because when you have a full stomach and you lay down, you push more pressure on that top valve that should be closed so you're more likely to have you know reflux and indigestion and and problems like that they're going to keep you from getting comfortable and sleeping at night so for our children uh, a good breakfast and 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 thank goodness that we have programs here uh, in our country that, that that provides a good breakfast and a good lunch for kids during the school year and now sometimes even even year round to help because sleep and nutrition are so important for them to be able to learn and function. Oh, absolutely, and and I'll actually um, d- disagree a little bit on the, the the quality of some of the foods we feed our kids. Um, you know that the new regulations in the paper uh, came out with oh we need to stricter low fat, and I am actually a very anti low fat person. Low fat means more sugar and more toxins and more processed foods, and which means. Um, more diabetics and more weight gain and so I'm not a fan of low fat foods at all and there's so much data out there to refute the low fat craze that has caused us to be so overweight but and, and I would say in adults breakfast is not as important as we think it is but in children then yes definitely you need to feed them so they can sit I mean Lord knows I couldn't sit through class all day like kids do anymore it's very difficult to sit there for however many hours they're in there and pay attention all day long especially you know we're still very fortunate here our kids still get recess there are schools out there their kids don't get recess I'm like how can you sit and focus all day if you don't ever take a break and go play mm-hmm. you know you got to play and um, so that's a huge problem so but some of the foods we feed our kids are not helpful they need to eat they need to eat that's for sure but you know I still think the the jury is still out on what do we really need to be feeding our kids so hopefully we'll get some better answers here in the next few years for the health of of everyone now medical pharmacy has another program um, it's vitamins for kids mm-hmm. uh, and we talk about sleep we talk about good diet exercise and and vitamins we even kids need those because sometimes as you just pointed out the diets we get are not um not the best right well you know even when you're as an adult trying to eat healthy you can't get everything you need from food and everybody knows that not all kids are going to eat their veggies and uh you know again one fruit a day is plenty for a child or an adult but lots of veggies and it's hard to get all of those veggies and nutrients into a child so the vitamin program is something to try to supplement the nutrition it's definitely not to replace a meal or or, you know be the end-all be-all but just to supplement that nutrition so the free vitamin program at all three locations shepherdsville bloomfield and bardstown just have to come in and sign up and it is there is some age restrictions to it um you know but mostly because as you get older the vitamins are designed for younger children and so could you still get the vitamins that same vitamin as older yes but you would need to take more so the one a day vitamin really isn't appropriate for an older child it's just not enough it won't hurt you but there's the benefits of it are not quite enough to warrant giving it to the older children of the community okay so healthy sleep habits for Everybody, but for children, are very important as we, as we have already sent some of them back to school and maybe a few still getting ready to start if they're in some of the private schools. But uh, it's, it's very important that they get double digit sleep double digit sleep and yeah and it won't it won't hurt the adults to do that either and uh you know the trick is is people like you know i have a lot of people that say their kids don't go to bed till 11 which is way too late um in in a lot of people's opinions those two books i mentioned again healthy sleep habits happy child and um the baby wise book both phenomenal um gives you little steps by step and like mark weisbluth will say if you have a child that's having sleep issues you want to move their bedtime up anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes every couple of nights until you get them to bed on time so you can't just oh about bed oh it goes to bed at 11 we need to go to bed at se- you know 7 30 or 8 yeah. that's not going to happen overnight so you do have to take the steps to do it and for children with a lot of sleep issues um you can give children melatonin some doctors will tell you it's safe some will tell you it's not safe some will tell you it works some will say it doesn't work 
Melatonin is used by the digestive tract, so sometimes it's not as effective if your child has some digestive irregularities, but you can use melatonin. Keep in mind, if you give your child melatonin, that you need to keep them off um, a computer or a smartphone or away from the TV because melatonin is inactivated by those blue lights, so it won't work as well. And as your child gets a little older, there's a product called L-theanine. Now, L-theanine is in a lot of the um, stress supplements that help you sleep that we use for adults. Mm-hmm. But we don't recommend some of the other adaptogenic herbs that are in there for kids. But L-theanine is very safe for children. And as long as they can swallow, it's not a very big capsule, but as long as they can swallow that, that given 30 minutes to an hour before bedtime can really help that child relax and get a better night's sleep. But it will not make them sleepy, so they will not wake up in the morning groggy. So that's key. So it's, you know, better than, let me give my child Benadryl, which really doesn't get them deep sleep. It just makes them groggy enough that they don't get out of bed. And they... <laughs> yeah, Benadryl, Benadryl can make a child really hyper too, so you got to be careful with that. Is, is L tryptophan? Is was that in the L whatever you were? No, L tryptophan is what is what makes you sleepy at Thanksgiving because it's, it's in it's in Turkey. Turkey. <laughs> yes, it's in it's in Turkey, and and it used to actually be a supplement, and they had some issues with it, so they kind of pulled that okay. supplement off the market. That was not too long after I got out of pharmacy school, because um, they used to tout it not only for sleep but for PMS issues in women. And there was and, and honestly, it's been so long ago I don't remember what the problem was. Okay. But L-theanine is um, it's not only fabulous for sleep, but if you are one of those people that you get really nervous about taking a test really knocks the edge off and helps you to be able to focus on taking whatever exam or giving a presentation without affecting your ability to focus so great for sleep also great for just kind of social anxiety nervous issues as well big turkey leg Go to the that's right and get a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> or disney world i'd rather go to disney, disney world, world. Yeah, okay. they have the best turkey legs down there <laughs> okay. allison uh, tell us anything new at uh, medical pharmacy of course as you uh, mentioned uh, reminding our audience that uh, you're in uh, Bloomfield now, and of course here in uh, Bardstown and in Shepherdsville. Yes, in Bloomfield, and it was very frustrating to get to Bloomfield because not only did they close the main road down, well, then they good. closed the second road down, and I thought, now whose idea was this? You can't hardly get there anymore. But um, I think somebody told me yesterday they thought the bridge was done. Now I don't know mm-hmm. for sure if Bloomfield Road's open, but Bloomfield store is there. Um, it, there's not a lot of new stuff going on. Um, well, I mean, I'm going to be gone. I, I do a lot of you know the supplement consults, and of course, for those that don't know, I'll be heading out on maternity leave sometime in the next three weeks or so so i'm only here limited but um i'll be at home somebody needs to track me down they know where to find me and otherwise i'll be back soon but there's the flash day health fairs coming up in september we're always a big part of that i i don't know if i'll be able to be a part of it this year depending on the timing and and the new baby and all that fun stuff but somebody from the pharmacy will be there <laughs> medical pharmacy will be there. will be there i may not be there this yeah. year for the first time but uh, somebody will be there uh, so not a lot of new stuff going on right now Okay, so people that have any questions need to uh, get with you quickly. <laughs> uh, and if, But, of course, you have a, a great staff at all three of the locations. I do. I do have a good staff. And we actually have a, a new pharmacist coming on board that will be here some and in Shepherdsville some. Um, he starts in a couple of weeks. But um, most of my pharmacists um, are, are very well trained, and you know if they don't know the answer to the question, I've already given them permission to text me. If I said if I, if I'm not if I'm not asleep or with the baby, I'll be glad to answer. But um, we've trained them all. They've got a lot of the same um, educational materials that I give to patients. So we'll be able to take care of, of whoever while I'm gone, and even if I have to do it from afar, we'll make sure nobody uh, nobody misses out. Call that remote remote that's, operation that's right you can do an amazing amount of stuff via email yeah. you know <laughs> and if you want we'll set you up with our with our remote broadcast stuff and you can just sit there from your house and and can call into each of your offices and, and do one yeah on one that's yeah that's right i'll make sure the house is clean before we do one of those <laughs> we, we won't do that to you uh, allison claywell roby with medical pharmacy three locations uh thank you very much and again re-emphasize how important sleep is for everybody but in particular the children yeah you want your kids to uh, do well in school and be successful and have less depression anxiety and be healthier it's all about some good sleep yeah it's it's amazing how we forget that and as you said you can't get too much sleep you can get too little that's exactly right yeah i mean especially with back to school craziness we've all been busy and it's just easy to push that bedtime back and push it back because there's so many things that need to be done and you know that it, you really need to just take sleep needs to take a big priority in the children's lives and put them to bed and then you know worry about the rest of the stuff later i tell people you know you might come to my house and it's not going to be spotless it looks lived in because to me i love a clean house but there's a lot more things that are more important and sleep is really at the top of the list there you go. allison thank you very much and take care and 
We'll be continuing the show for your health, uh, probably all in a pre-recorded mode with, with Allison here over the next uh, probably months or so. So we, we do appreciate you coming in today. And, and uh, again, best, best of everything to everyone at all three of our medical locations. Thank you much. That's For Your Health, a presentation of Medica Pharmacy here in Bardstown, Bloomfield, and Shepherdsville.